it is Jackie from Pocket of Preschool tonight. So tonight I am showing you the brand new All About Ramps science unit um, for your science and your block center. So this has been added to the bundle. So if you own the Little Learner Science Curriculum Bundle, download it again and this will be there. So like I said, this is um, the Ramps science unit. So Ramps and Inclined Planes. Um, like like a little mini simple machines unit. There will be an additional simple machines pack with all of the different kinds of simple machines, but this one is just about ramps. So like all of them, I'm gonna show you what, what's included. At the end, we will do a little quick Q&A. So if you have questions, pop them in now, or you can pop them in later. And why don't you tell me if you've ever done a ramps science unit, or if you do, do you do it in, during like a transportation theme, which is typically what I do. But I've also done it with a winter theme because skiing and sledding and ice skating, like races, um, like cross country ice skiing, those are all have ramps. So winter is full of ramps and obviously when you do transportation, it's full of ramps too. So you can do it during either, um, either theme. So I'm gonna flip the camera around and show you what I got. All right, so here is the science table. And for this um, science unit, I did add the definitions to the vocabulary cards and there is a set of vocabulary cards without the definition so if you don't want all those words on there those are there for you too so the two vocabulary card options and there's a whole bunch of ramp challenges there's 14 so basically what you're going to do is every week or every depending on when your kiddos have um have um, accepted the challenge, or not accepted the challenge, sorry, when they've met, met the challenge or when they've figured it out, um, you'll kind of move to the next one. So my science table has some blocks, which would be your supports, and then it has ramps, and then you'll have your challenge card, and those will change. And then I have some blueprint pages, and then my ramps, and I usually only have a couple balls, because if you put out too many balls, they will lose them all over the classroom. That way, if, like, this is kind of set up for two kiddos or three kiddos to use, so you can put just two or three balls out. That way, they're not losing them, and they know they have to keep track of them. So, like, th the first challenge you would want to start with is make the ball move. And so they're going to have to figure out a way to make the ball move on this ramp without pushing it or pulling it or blowing it. So, obviously, they're going to have to make an incline with the ramp. So once they have figured this out, you can switch it out to the next challenge. And the next one is make the ball go fast. And I have, there's so many. So it has make the ball stop, make the ramps connect, make the ball go through something, make the path long, make the path go up and down. That one's tricky. <laughs> um, make the ball go in the air. Make a may, oh, sorry, that one I that one I fixed after I noticed it was wrong, so throw that one out. So that one is make the path long. <laughs> um, I have that one fixed in your pack, just not in my um, printed ones. And then make a maze, make a roller coaster, make a ramp race, and what ball rolls the fastest. So kind of um, exploring friction there. And I'm gonna flip the camera around and tell you guys a couple things real quick. So I know you guys are gonna ask, um, when do you change your challenges? So I typically would change mine on Mondays. Um, I've done this study actually or this ramps unit with my full day classroom probably like six or seven times. Sometimes it's lasted a month. Sometimes it's lasted two months um, because they get so invested and excited and it just, go, they go crazy. Um, and they do make really, really amazing, amazing ramps and they're so intricate and detailed, it's awesome. But then some years they're not as interested and they lose interest after about a month. So you kind of pick how long you want it to be. Um, but I would, I typically would change the challenges. Um, usually um, every Monday to kind of make sure the kiddos who are um, doing the investigations every week are um, getting challenged. And let's say you observe your kiddos and they have all figured out how to make, make the ball stop. Well, what I would do is have a science talk. So during circle, um, have kind of like a science class meeting and just talk about the challenge. So how, how did they make the ball 
Oh, this one is. Sorry, how did they make the ball stop? So you have to make a ramp, and I would have them build that ramp um, collaboratively as a group. Um, you would you would facilitate it. So you'd be making a, a ramp, and then have them tell you, oh, you put a block at the end, or you put a can at the end, or you put a tray at the end, whatever they have discovered to make the ball stop. And, or maybe they're, they're putting another ramp at the piece at the end, whatever they're doing. Um, have a science talk and say, you know what? We figured out this challenge. Let's pick a new challenge and then flip to the next one. And that's when I would introduce the next challenge would be at the end of the science talk. Um, but yeah, but the challenges are numbered. And like I said, I've done this with my class probably like at least five times, five different years. So they typically go through the same challenges and they talk about the same things. Or maybe your kiddos are obsessed with, they're like, oh, let's make a trap. Or, um, cause one they love doing is making, I can't find it. Um, one is make a trap and I just put out, I have um, metal cans in my block center. So you can also put this in the block center as well. So they like to put a trap or they build one with the blocks and at the end of the ramp. So if, like if they're talking about something, then I change the challenge to what they're interested in and what they're doing with the ramps to kind of extend their thinking even more. But so you can use them in order or you can use them based on what your kiddos are doing. It's totally up to you. And I know some people, some of you guys were asking about the actual ramps. So I'm gonna flip it around and tell you about the ramps, pieces you can use. So the ramps I have over here, this is Cove molding. It's actually like trim board from Lowe's. And all of this information is in the packet. I have one foot sections and I have two foot sections. And you get like a giant piece, like double tall as you at least, like huge trim pieces when you buy them at Lowe's or Home Depot. And then just cut them or have Lowe's. Um, sometimes it depends on your Lowe's. Sometimes they'll cut them for you. Sometimes they won't. Um, just sand the edges. And you guys, I've had these for like at least, like you can tell they're like worn, worn. <laughs> they, but they, they last forever. Um, so this is cold molding pieces from Lowe's. Now you can also use a couple, I have other options for you. So you can use pool noodles. Um, so just cut the pool noodles in half, um, long ways. And then again, I have the one foot sections and then I have the two foot sections. Now the pool noodles are a little bit flimsier. So when they are building, and once you start building with them too, and I really encourage you guys to do that is build with your kiddos. What they'll have to do is they'll have to build like side supports um, for the ramp. Otherwise, um, the pool noodles are a little rickety and they'll fall off. But they'll just have to just add like some extra supports to the pool noodles. But it's still totally workable and you don't need um, tape. And then the ball just rolls. Whoops. Drop that one. And I use bouncy balls. So. And it just rolls down. And that one stops. So then you can say, well, how do you make it go to the end? What do you think we could do? And obviously, you know. <laughs> um, but they would try different things. They're going to move these blocks around, see if that makes any difference. They're going to um, then eventually what they'll figure out is, <clears throat> excuse me, to make the base or the support bigger. Um, so you can use the cold molding, the, the pool noodles. Or you can use Hot Wheels track. Um, this I, it's just at Target. I want to say it's, I, I put a link in the packet. They're just you can just buy the extra pieces. You don't have to buy like the kit. And I want to say it's like five bucks, and you get like this is my own kids' Hot Wheels set. But I checked um, before the holiday; they were out when I um, went this week. Um, <coughs> but it's like five bucks, and you get like four or five pieces. So this works as well. And then on these, all you do is you like push. I probably can't do it on the video, but you just push your finger and then this, this blue connector comes off. <clears throat> and you can also use um, wood blocks or you can use cardboard too. And if you're using cardboard, they're just going to have to build those walls um, for supports. <clears throat> and let me show you how you can do it in the blocks center as well. So here it is set up in the block center. So these are the other set of vocabulary cards that are included. These are the ones that do not have the <clears throat> the definition and you can see when you're doing ramps you're doing a lot of opposites so is it moving slow or fast is your incline or is your support high or low is the ball light or heavy 
um, or is your ramp piece, you know, light or heavy? So you're really work doing a lot with opposites and using a lot of that math vocabulary as well. So I just, um, when I do my ramps unit, I usually do it in the block center and in the um, science center. Just so um, here's the make a trap challenge. My kiddos, um, I have it over here. And I usually make a, a challenge set for the block center and then I'll make a challenge set for the, um, the discovery center. And you can also put them on a ring too. That way you can just flip them. Um, it's totally up to you. Um, but yeah, so just put, and I have some really great books I found. Um, if you need more books, there is, I just printed this one smaller. You, you get the full, um, full page version, but it just talks about ramps that are around us. So that way they can make connections to all the ramps they find in their own real life. So that's included. And then there is, um, a book list with some other, um, awesome, um, books that are perfect for preschool as well. And then they just use the blocks, um, on the shelf. So Lynn is asking, is this uh, a different than the STEM pack? So my STEM I can build pack, that's something that's totally separate. Um, this is more of a focused science investigation, just about ramps. So yeah, so Lynn, this is a totally different thing. And my own kiddos built some ramps um, for, oh, I'm shaky, sorry guys, for while, while I was setting it up today. So you can tell this one, he's using the two foot section and then there's a support down here and then it goes back up and then the can is at the end and it drops in there and then here's the blueprint he made um and then he you can also take a picture and put it on the blueprint and then make a blueprint book with it so the kiddos can make each other's ramps as well um and this is a perfect portfolio entry or um for for your science or stem domain <clears throat> And then he can compare the picture to how it looks too, which is fun. And then here is my pre, my pre-K kiddo made this ramp. So he used um, the support of this ramp and he kept it going. And his ramp actually goes in the air and it lands in the cup. So he, when he was building it, he was having to test it and then move the can based on where it was landing. And then he is pre-K, so he um, wrote trap because he built a trap for his um, blueprint. So your blueprints, and if you have three-year-olds, they're gonna scribble, and that's okay. Um, it might just be a line, and that might be the ramp, and that is awesome too. Here's um, the blueprint book. It comes with a cover, so you can keep this out. And then even after your ramp study is over, you can, um, you know those like mini trash cans for your kitchen? Um, those are great to store your ramps in. You can just put like a little mini kitchen can, trash can, and put your ramps in it, whatever kind you decide to um, purchase. But you will need some kind of ramp <laughs> for this study. And then let me show you some other goodies I got for you too. <clears throat> so I also have the parts of an inclined plane. So you have your supports and your plane. And then I did include some fun facts since there aren't that many parts <laughs> of an inclined plane. Um, so that way you can talk about that as you're doing that. Oh, so I just use those little bouncy balls. Um, but you can really use any kind of like a bouncy ball or a ping pong ball. Um, either of those work. So kind of whatever you have on hand <coughs> in your classroom. Or you know those like small um, like little balls with like holes in them from the dollar store. Those work as well. And then I also have a roll or is it a roll or is it a slide? Um, challenge. So basically you just set up a simple cardboard ramp and then they have to, this is an interactive chart or you can do the sorting chart. So they would test to see if this one rolls or does it slide. So they can sort the objects between rolls and slides and then I just have, it's, it's all the stuff you would have in your classroom so it's nothing you would have to go out and buy. All of these things that you have in your classroom. And then if you wanted to, you could do it as a circle time activity and make an anchor chart and then make some, um, talk about characteristics of things that, that slide and things that roll. And there is a recording page. And you could also have your kiddos go around the classroom and find things that slide or things that roll. I bet he put it on this side. So you can talk about that too if you put things different ways. Um, if, if it'll slide or if, it, if it's a roll. 
And then to explore friction, you can make this fun to done little ramp. And these are just, okay, you guys, I have, I only ping pongs I could find or my ones from Halloween. These are like eyeball ping pong balls. But like I said, any balls will work. This is just a piece of cardboard and I put foil, felt, rubber, that's rubber mat from like the dollar store. And then I put hot glue on this one. So they, and you want to have a, a short incline on this ramp. Otherwise this, this, um, this experiment would get down me. So what they would do, which is hard to do on the video. So they would put the balls at the top and then they would roll and see which one is the fastest. And then they can score them based on what place they came in. And if you, if you think like maybe you have four year olds and you think this five would be too hard, just make, or maybe you don't have all of these things in your classroom, just use, make a friction experiment with four and just leave off one and you can pick and that's, and, or you can do it with three. So if you have like three year olds, you can still do it. Just do um, just three things that you're experimenting with. And then they can put them in order. And then if you use the Velcro dots, then they can move them for the next person. So that way they um, can do the experiment too. But this one's really fun to explore the concept of friction. So, and then you can also, there is a ramp challenge that is which balls roll the fastest or which ball rolls the fastest. Sorry, so you can just grab any balls you have from your classroom. Like this one's from like the Target Dollar Spot. I think this is one of like the big old navy one. There's like a marble and a pom pom. But basically, they're gonna ch figure out which ball rolls the fastest on their ramp. And you can talk about, well, why do you think it rolls the fastest? And it, obviously, it has to do with the texture. So how much friction the ball creates and the weight of the ball. So that is the friction experiments you can do. And then as always, in the science, um, and all the science, there are ramp journals, and there is one with dotted lines, and it comes with covers, and then this one comes with blueprints, and there's three different blueprint options for you guys, and then there is a parent letter, so you guys can keep that learning going on at home, and then I like to, I use these iris tubs for my storage, so I just put the whole unit in here. I know some people use those pockets from the Dollar Tree, like plastic pockets. Um, some people use um, binders, but just put the cover of the product, or of the thing on, um, put the um, cover of the product on the, for your cover. And then all of these amazing teacher direction pages are included with photos. So that way you don't have to remember all this stuff when you go to do the unit. There's tons and tons of photos. And I just keep my um, things I copy on the back but there's tons of action photos. That way you guys don't have to think if you're having a Sunday brain freeze, <laughs> um, which we all know happens, or if you're having a come back, um, come back from break holiday brain freeze like I've been having lately, or maybe you're sick, um, but it's all there for you so you can just kind of do it and you're good to go. So just read it and then put it in place. So yeah, so you guys have a fabulous night and I will talk to you soon. Bye.